Chapter 8, Section 4, Indian Wars Shattered Tribal Cultures. To many people, the railroads represented progress, but for Indians on the Great Plains, it was a threat to their very existence. The railroad cut through hunting grounds, disturbing the buffalo, their main source of food, clothing, and shelter. It also brought ranchers, farmers, and soldiers to the hunting grounds. In response, many tribes fought the railroad, waging war to stop the rush of settlement that jeopardized their ways of life. Their battle for survival represented the latest round of what are known as the Indian Wars. Cultures Clash on the Great Plains From the perspective of a nation bent on expanding westward, the many Indian tribes in the west presented a problem. They refused to change their customs to conform to the settlers' culture. For example, they believed that tribes or villages had rights to areas of land. However, they did not believe that land could be owned, bought, or sold. Differences between Indians and settlers over land had led to conflict early in the nation's history. Conflicts continued as settlers crossed the Appalachians and laid claim to tribal lands in the Ohio and Mississippi River valleys. To end such conflicts, the Indian Removal Act of 1830 had forced the largest tribes living east of the Mississippi to move west to Oklahoma Territory on the Great Plains. When settlers began to populate the west after the Civil War, they again clashed with native peoples. The Indians were once more viewed as an obstacle to the progress of settlement and industry, as one government official put it. A complex clash of cultures occurred on the Great Plains. Nomadic tribes had roamed the plains freely for centuries in pursuit of buffalo. They had little in common with eastern tribes who had been conquered and removed the plains in the 1830s. These differences led to conflict between nomadic tribes that wanted more open land and settled tribes that wanted to protect their farmland. Larger conflicts arose with the advance of white civilization. As settlers moved westward, they slaughtered millions of buffalo, endangering a vital element of tribal culture. Many tribes refused to give up their homelands and ways of life without a fight. Their warriors began attacking settlers. The U.S. Army responded with attacks on the Plains tribes. In 1864, troops raided the party of Cheyenne and Arapaho who had camped at Sand Creek, Colorado, with permission from the commander of a nearby fort. More than 150 people, many of them women and children, were killed. The Sand Creek Massacre sparked a general uprising among the Plains tribes. In an effort to end conflict and open up land for settlers, the federal government tried to confine most western tribes to reservations. A reservation is an area of federal land reserved for an Indian tribe. Federal officials promised to protect these tribes. However, instead of protecting Indians, the government far too often helped prospectors and settlers who invaded a reservation. For example, a gold strike in the Black Hills of the Dakota Territory brought hordes of miners onto the Sioux Reservation in the 1870s. The government ignored the invasion, even though the Treaty of Fort Laramie signed in 1868 guaranteed the Sioux exclusive rights to the land. Many tribes, from the Apaches and Comanches in the south to the Sioux, Cheyenne, and Arapahoes in the north, refused to stay on reservations. Bands of raiders moved out into the plains, where they fought to stop the expansion of settlements. In 1876, Sioux and Cheyennes who were camped near the Little Bighorn River in Montana came under attack by U.S. cavalry troops under George Armstrong Custer. The much larger Indian force, led by Sioux chiefs Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse, wiped out Custer's troops. After the Battle of Little Bighorn, also known as Custer's Last Stand, federal forces hunted down and captured about 3,000 Sioux warriors. Over the next few years, the army subdued the other major tribes of the Great Plains. Adaptation and Efforts to Assimilate American Indians The settlement of the West was disastrous for large numbers of American Indians. Many died as a result of violence, disease, and poverty. Others clung to a miserable existence in reservations. The survivors struggled to adapt to their changed circumstances. Some Indians tried agriculture, the eastern tribes had been removed to Oklahoma where became successful farmers. Many tribes established their own government and schools. At the same time, the U.S. government adopted policies aimed at speeding the assimilation or absorption of Indians into the dominant culture. Federal officials set up about two dozen boarding schools to educate American Indians in white men's ways. Congress furthered the assimilation push by enacting the Dawes Act of 1887. Under this law, a tribe could no longer own reservation lands as a group. Instead, the government began distributing land to individuals within a tribe. Each family was granted its own plot of land, which it could hold or sell. This change eroded a cornerstone of American Indian culture, the belief that land could not be bought or sold. 
Land sales, both free and forced, greatly decreased the amount of Indian-owned land. 